Hey there, Solar Moon here, and here is another development log video. Um, this one's going to be a little different. I'm going to be quiet today because it's 1 a.m. roughly where I am uh, right now. Uh, and I don't want to be too loud since there's other people sleeping in the house, so don't want to uh, wake them up unnecessarily. I could do this tomorrow, but I am an idiot, and I just would rather do it now. <laughs> So yeah, um, this is going to be a devlog video for the project planning software I've been working on uh, for the past couple of days. Uh, it's been going really well, and uh, I've implemented a ton of things, so I'm going to go through it uh, piece by piece. Uh, I guess the first thing is that there is a dark theme now, which is cool. So uh, you have the ability to change the theme under the project settings menu. Uh, all the settings are under the context menu that you open with the right click. Um, I know that I could have a file menu up here for this, but I thought, well, let's try this first and see how this feels um, and see how that works out. So you can change it from moonlight to dark crimson and then from uh, dark crimson to sunlight, which is that original color with a little bit of a tweak uh, to some of the colors to get a little more uh, appealing. But yeah, that's really bright. So back to moonlight. Cool. So. Uh, yeah, I did, I did so much uh, between the last video and this one. Um, okay, so Taz can now have neighbors, um, and like I mentioned in the previous video, when they are neighbors, they automatically will number. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, they automatically will number. Uh, so you can just drag them, and you can see that they number accordingly. So they go in uh, descending order from top to bottom. If you indent them, then they basically become children of that that parent task in terms of numbering. Uh, this doesn't have any application, like being able to, for example, drag this one to drag all the uh, children tasks, you know, F, G, and H, that would be nice, but that's not implemented just yet. Uh, but there are keyboard shortcuts. You can easily do this, which is nice. Not perfect, but uh, it's, it's solid. It's really good. It works really well, and I think it's uh, yeah, a nice, a nice little additional feature. Um, in addition, let's see. I now have a search bar at the bottom right where you can type in uh, words that you find in your tasks, so you can actually find the task for that word. Uh, just in case you're, you know, like if I'm looking for something, let's say for undo. I can type it in and it'll show, uh, highlight all the tasks that have undo in the description here. So this one has undo, that one has undo, this one has undo in it here. So yeah, this is useful because that way you can easily find the task that uh, you're kind of referring to. I need to still add uh, buttons here so you can cycle between all of the found tasks, but it's still a, a nice little feature to have. Um, what else? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, I've been reading all of your comments uh, on the on my YouTube page here. Okay, that's really creepy. Um, but yeah, I've been reading your comments uh, on your on the YouTube page, so thank you very much for leaving them. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, Andre WM says, I don't like the white color, yeah. Um, different people have suggested dark theme, and so that's what I've been implementing. That's what I implemented, which is nice. Um, Ronald Pixar says, why not have title that shows and description that expands on hover? Um, when referring to basically only the first line of the description appearing for the task, that's because uh, I had the title initially as well as the description, but it just didn't really make sense since they were both they were both uh, parts of the task. Like it, it didn't really make sense to have a title and a description when the description is the title. I mean, you know. The whole point of a task is to show you what you have to do. What's the point of a task that has a title? I, I mean, you know, basically it's just one one piece of data, what the task is trying to convey to you. Uh, it doesn't really make sense to have a title for the task as well as the description because sometimes the description isn't filled out. You might just have the title. So it just makes sense to have just a description uh, for the task. Um, yeah, Gecko had a lot of good ideas. Uh, directly editing the tasks on the grid itself, which would, which would be nice. Um, yeah, that, that's a, definitely a, a good, 
good idea. Um, let me this out the way. But yeah, it's a definitely good idea to have the tasks just be editable uh, directly. So if I can do that, I'll see about doing that. Um, some different people had ideas or, or questions about uh, the diffs uh, that VCS creates for the project plans. And so I did a lot of work to make it uh, better. Um, originally, the plans were something like this. This was the original file that was output. And I didn't really think too much about it. I was like, okay, well, this is you know, plain text. It's always saving the task the same way. So it should be fine for VCS. Uh, but I was finding that the the generated files was were, were a bit lacking because like for example if you have a task uh, and you delete it it'll delete out of you know here the diff will delete it out which is fine but if you create another task it will basically reuse some of the elements for like the next task down and it would be kind of hard to parse uh, so I did a lot of work uh, to basically sort the task and make make it so that basically the tasks are much more obviously being diffed uh, so you can see in this example that um, you know for example this test uh, task the position was changed and that's it um, the size was changed for this one and the position that's it and so the changes are much more legible much more visible uh, and so you can see that these tasks have been completely removed um, if I create another task where that went oh here it goes here's another task so it this isn't yeah this is an ideal it should ideally create an entirely new task but that's this might be as best as I'm gonna get it but it, it's basically better than it used to be I think um, still not perfect but it is at least legible to the point where you can read it and see basically when a task is uh, edited or changed or removed or added um, let's see Steppa says it'd be cool if you could add milestones and deadlines, uh, so that'd be a good idea. I'll have to see about how I can quite do that, uh, but that's that's definitely on the list of things to do, I think. Let's see, Gecko mentioned uh, it, he has mixed fe feelings about storing everything in source control. The text file seems so fine, but he doesn't want to clog his repo with images and things. So what's being stored? Uh, what the file itself stores is just basically references to the images references to the resources it doesn't store actually the um, the the data itself um, if you were to try to like give this to another person it won't load the, those images it won't load those resources uh, if you need it to like give it to them in a way that it would load uh, the best Hmm. Well, for one, the p file paths that are written are absolute file paths currently, uh, so they aren't relative. Um, so if if they were relative, then it might be possible to like store the paths as relative, and then like store the file somewhere on a network drive, and the resource is relative to that network drive, and then everyone could access it no matter what their uh, their operating system. But currently, that's not the way it works. Uh, so if you were wanted to share it, you would have to just ask them to like replace the, the images on their computer. Um, but that would be a good idea, so I'm, I'm going to add that to the list. Also this is a nice little feature, if you add a new task, it will insert itself above the one that you have, uh, the task you have selected, that way you can easily add a task to a list. So this is going to be, um, make it so that Resource paths are relative, not absolute. If possible. Or at least give an option. So that might be something to add to the project settings. Let me actually just, and that's something else. If you delete it, it'll uh, move the task below up. Uh, so that makes it a little better. Let's put this here actually, a new task. Let's 
so that might be a good idea. All right, cool. Um, let's see. Uh, Zo Zeus says that it's awesome. Thank you. He says uh, maybe you have this plan, but it'd be cool to see a task automatically turn into a progress bar when subtasks are attached, and vice versa. That would be yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be a nice uh, additional thing to do. Um, he says also it's unclear how a bit unclear how the tasks and sub task uh, correlate to the timeline up here but it's something that I plan to address yeah I, I have to figure out exactly how this timeline correlates to yeah how this timeline exactly correlates to uh, the tasks because you know this is basically now the now line so the tasks have to almost like scroll automatically which is weird I'm not sure exactly how I'm how I want to do it uh, let's see Lucretia says have a strong ho hover game yes yeah, uh, probably a good idea uh, parent child relationship um, associate tasks a lot for color preferences and dark mode so yeah a lot, lots of good ideas lots of things I'd like to do um, that I just haven't gotten to but there's still a lot to do and it's it's gotten pretty good so far uh, also, Jochem Kujapurs. Kujapurs? I think I'm saying that name right. Uh, basically, gave some uh, advice on making the end result, the uh, plan files, source control friendly. Uh, so, I'll definitely see about uh, investigating some time, uh, putting some time into that. And uh, I mean, I've already put a lot of time into making sure the. F well, sometime into making sure the files are source control friendly uh and it, they're pretty good i think at this stage maybe not perfect but they're pretty good okay and uh, anthony scott says that master plan is a great name perfect name so that's definitely one idea I, i'm thinking planet might be good because like solar loon you know solar loon uh kill, you know galaxy space planet you plan something you plan it so i think that'd be kind of cool uh, that's a good name. Um, so that's that's an idea. I have to consider that. Okay. Uh, I also added sound. I added sound. Uh, sound task. I'm gonna uh, boost up the desktop volume a little bit. No, no, no. Okay. So let me let me do this in isolation. If you click on a on a sound, it will go ahead and play the sound through and then loop. So this is, uh, by the way, this is Prey from the Taiga album by Cubby. It's an excellent album, excellent song. Please check it out. Uh, but yeah, it'll play it in, in completion. Uh, but if you place them next to each other, it'll create a playlist, essentially. Uh, so this is the real point of this is to allow you to, for example, import, you know, maybe your songs that you want to study to or you want to, uh, that are, that are, um, good for your game project your your you know audio visual project whatever and you can say okay well here's the sound or here's a song that should be for uh this zone of my game here's what the player's gunshot sounds like or and whatever the case is the player's you know uh you know laser gun this is what it sounds like or this is what it sounds like when he gets hurt you can have these little sound bites and you kind of like okay that's what it sounds like and you kind of you know test those things out in your mind uh, while you're playing things out uh, but you can also loop them together and you use this process of uh, placing them next to each other to create essentially music And this is done. There's, there's no sequencing, there's no tracker, there's no time associated with this. It's just playing the samples through completely. And then once it's done, moving on to the next one down. So there, there's not really any 
real reason why this works so well. <laughs> it's just that the samples of the kick hi-hat and snare that I have uh, just don't really have that much of a tail on them, and so it, it all kind of syncs up to make a, a, a little bit of a beat. Uh, so that's cool. It's very um, weird and interesting. Um, yeah, so sound is working nice and uh, clean as well. Um, you can make new projects, you can save a project, you can load a project. Um, the project will automatically load. Um, it will, it will auto-load on start, so that's cool. Uh, so you don't have to like constantly go back and say load a project, it'll just pull up the last one you were working on um, now, which is cool. And so you can save a project, it just asks you to select a, the project directory, you know, it'll put a mass, um, it'll put the project uh, plan file in the directory that you that you asked for, which is nice. Okay, well that's essentially all I've done, um, quite a bit I feel like overall, and I'm uh, pretty happy with the outcome so far. Whoops, sorry, that was... I'm sure that might have scared some people, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> I forgot that I had the desktop audio up. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is a pretty good effect, um, pretty good tool, and it's uh, definitely shaping up and definitely looking and feeling better and easier to use. All right, well, uh, that's more or less it. Um, oh yeah, and if you drag a, a sound, uh, byte onto the program, it'll go ahead and create a sound task for it, just like a, just like it does for the image. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's about it. All right, well, thank you very much for watching. I've been Solar Loon. It's been real so far making this uh, little tool, and uh, hopefully I'll keep making it, and it'll turn out even better uh, next time around uh, that I make a video. All right, see ya, and uh, thanks for watching.